In engineering applications and in life in general, heat is transferred from one location to another or from one body to another. When two objects at different temperatures are in contact, the heat flows from the hotter body to the colder one. Some examples are heat exchanger, pot on the stove, soldering iron. As we can see from these examples, the flow of heat is in direction tending to equalize the temperature. In this video, we will focus on performing steady-state heat transfer analysis in mechanical. Let's go! Heat transfers from one body to another in three different ways. Conduction Internal energy is exchanged from one body to another due to temperature gradient. Convection – energy is exchanged between a solid body and surrounding fluid. Radiation – energy is transferred between bodies by electromagnetic waves. A steady-state thermal analysis calculates the effect of steady thermal loads on a system or component. Steady-state thermal analysis can be used to determine temperatures, thermal gradients, heat flow rates, and heat fluxes in an object that are caused by thermal loads that do not vary over time. Note that a thermal analysis in ANSYS Mechanical is not solving thermal stress problem. However, you can solve a thermal stress analysis by connecting thermal and structural systems in the workbench project schematic, which automatically transfers the non-uniform temperature field calculated in thermal analysis as an input condition for the structural analysis. In ANSYS Mechanical, we can solve heat transfer problem in solids. Such an approach is useful when the temperature distribution is unknown, but we want to calculate temperature field. ANSYS Mechanical uses thermal elements with a single degree of freedom temperature at each node. It is important to remember the thermal analysis can be solved without boundary conditions such as temperature and convection. Let's see the thermal boundary conditions available in ANSYS Mechanical. Specify temperature. As we mentioned previously, temperature is the degree of freedom ANSYS solves for, thus constraining it makes the problem easier to solve. A simulation that has only fixed temperature boundary condition will always be bounded and the user needs to verify if applying fixed temperature is a reasonable assumption. One should use temperature boundary condition only when the temperature is held constant, not to define a starting or estimated temperature. Convection boundary condition implies that there is a fluid, such as water or air, that carries heat to or from the surface. However, in ANSYS Mechanical, only the effect of the flow on the surface is simulated and actual flow is not modeled. Two items are required when applying convection boundary condition, ambient temperature and heat transfer coefficient or film coefficient. Heat flow simulates the transmission of the heat across the surfaces or edges or vertexes and as a result adds energy to the body. Perfectly insulated or adiabatic condition is naturally occurring boundary condition when no load is applied to the face, the heat flow rate through the face is zero. It is important to note that a symmetry boundary condition is also the same as naturally occurring boundary condition, so you don't have to apply any boundary conditions to designate a plane of symmetry. There is also an adiabatic condition which one can apply, which would override any thermal load scope to a body. 
There are other types of thermal loads and boundary conditions, but these are the basic ones which we will focus our attention on. In many cases, we analyze heat conduction problems that have a combination of boundary conditions such as specified temperature, convection, heat flow. Let's go and see how we can do steady-state heat transfer analysis in ANSYS Mechanical. In this example, we will show you how to set up and solve the heat transfer problem of a single pane window. A major source of the heat loss from a house occurs through the window. The rate of the heat flow through the single pane window will be calculated. We are going to simulate convection heat transfer with a temperature of the air inside the room at 22 degrees Celsius and outside of the building at 12 degrees Celsius. The heat transfer coefficient will be defined as 5 watts per meter square per degree Celsius, which represents stagnant air. A heat transfer problem can be solved without thermal conductivity and in this case 0.84 watts per meter and degree Celsius is used for the glass. Let's see how we can do this example in ANSYS Mechanical. Drag and drop a steady state thermal system from the toolbox to the project page. Open engineering data. Create a new material and give it the name glass. Right mouse click on isotropic thermal conductivity in the toolbox, include this property. Set value of thermal conductivity to 0.84 watts per meter and degrees Celsius. Go back to the project page and import geometry. Open Mechanical. Check units and make sure they are meter kilogram newton. Under Geometry, assign glass material. Under Mesh, insert Sweet Mesh. Set two elements through the thickness. Insert sizing. Set the element size value to 0.05 meters. Next, apply convection boundary condition on one side of the glass with the ambient temperature of 22 degrees Celsius and a film coefficient of 5 watts per meter square and degree Celsius. Apply convection on the opposite side of the window with an ambient temperature of 12 degrees Celsius and film coefficient of 5 watts per meter square and degree Celsius. The perimeter of the glass doesn't have any boundary condition applied, so an adiabatic condition is assumed by default. Solve the model. Insert temperature to examine temperature distribution through the thickness of the glass. Drag and drop convection from steady state thermal branch to solution to create the first reaction process. Drag and drop convection 2 from steady state thermal branch to the solution to create the second reaction probe. Evaluate the result. If we sum up the heat in watts reported under these two reaction probes, we can see that the heat balance is zero. 
By examining one reaction probe, we can see the amount of heat transferred through the pane of glass. This concludes the demo. Now let's summarize what we learned in this video. Steady state thermal analysis is used to calculate the temperature field when temperature distribution is unknown. In many cases, the heat conduction problem is solved with combination of boundary conditions such as specified temperature, convection, heat flow, and so on. The results of thermal analysis can be used to determine temperature distribution, thermal gradient, heat flow rates in an object that are caused by thermal loads that do not vary over time. Reaction probes can be used to check the heat balance of the steady state heat transfer problem. I hope that you find this video informative. Please share the video, post your comments, and subscribe to this channel to stay updated. Don't forget to visit courses.ansys.com to discover more useful courses. Thank you.